Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and I have my friend Detlef with me today. Good morning, you little yeah. people out there. Uh, good afternoon even, it's four minutes past <laughs> midday again, he always does this. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, this is not going to be recorded like a normal video. This is my Nemesis, the uh, docking speaker that will not charge. We had a video a few days on this and there was lots of suggestions by various subscribers. So what we're going to do in this video is that for myself, we're going to first just try all the suggestions that were made to see if any of those give us a clue. And obviously I'll show you the main and show you who made the suggestions. And if none of those help, we're going to see if we can figure out why this doesn't work. So apart from times when maybe we're not doing anything or we're looking to find things, I'll just cut those parts out of the video. But the rest of this is just going to be the conversation, yeah. whatever's happening. Yeah, so it'll take as long as it takes. So We uh, try not to look too stupid. Yeah, well, it'll be maybe <laughs> ramble a bit, yeah. So the first uh, suggestion, in fact, let me just quickly show you the suggestions that we had from various viewers. So the first one is somebody... Uh, Crash Guru 2, he's talking about pin 8 being the temperature detect pin, and it needs to be between 80% and 45% of VDD. This is a supply coming from the charger. I'll show you in the data sheet when we try this, but one of the suggestions from Prash Guru 2, as we have a look at pin 8, is also saying we can isolate the pin or ground it to bypass the temperature sensing to see if the thing will then charge. So that was one suggestion. Uh, another one, um, oh, somebody asked about using a the thermal imaging camera. I didn't do it on the last video, but I have done it, and the whole thing is cold. There's no temperature I can see anywhere when it's supposed to be charging. Uh, feedback pin on pin 9. This is a wobble wall, is that? Wobby wall. Wobby wall. Wobby wall 8421. So, Wobby wall suggesting we look at the feedback on pin 9. So, this monitors the battery voltage. And he's saying if there's a problem with the resistor here or something, then the chip would think it's charged. So we can try that one on pin 9. That's pins 8 and 9. Somebody checks the inductor. Well, they don't generally fail, but uh, Alibi? It's Albi. Albi 607. We'll try it. We'll just measure the inductor, see it isn't open. Mm -hmm. um, we have another suggestion. Right. Pin 6, uh, the 5-volt LDO output. So this should be generated by the chip see if it's active and then we have another suggestion that when i soldered the new chip did i make effectively a short circuit from the pad underneath to any of the pins well we can test that and i was wondering actually how we prove whether i actually have the ground pad connected but if we have an output on pin six was it yeah the ldo then the chip must be working to that extent mm -hmm. we must have a ground so we look at ground on the underside pin, pin, sorry, pad or pin 15. Make sure there's no shorts. Make sure it's connected. Uh, I think there was one more. Uh, connect the battery to a bench supply to see if the battery will charge. This was my first suggestion, yeah. Okay, this is Prash Guru 2 again, yeah. so we'll try that one. And I'm with him because I just measured the voltage on the battery and it's down to 9.7. So this means one cell is at 3.2. This is on a, on the edge where it says this is deeply charged, deeply discharged. Discharge. Okay. So we should get some current in here so uh, we can see if the battery takes charge. Okay, so we can try that one. Again, Mr. Mindlink, the same as Prash Guru, asking about this temperature and V-set on pin 7, so we'll be trying that. And that's as far as I can see. Oh! Is the signal from the battery, the white wire, arriving to the chip? Mm, yeah, sure. Okay, so that's something we can talk about what that signal is yeah. in case you guys don't know. I don't know much. Det knows more about this. I can tell you a little story about these, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> so we have a number of things here. Yeah, check the battery helmet. 8998. So again, we'll do that one. And the last one, um, user something or other, is actually asking me to check the enable. Yeah, enable is a good thing, yeah. Okay, so there we have the enable. So that's what we're going to test. My voice is still really bad, guys. So, okay, guys. So that has the battery. It's three cells in here connected to this meter, and I've just knocked one of the wires yep, off. You killed it already. I killed it already. <laughs> so now we're on. 
9.72. Yeah. So that battery is discharged, yeah? Uh, this is pretty low, yeah, because this is 3.2 volts per cell, so I'd call this deeply discharged. So what's fully charged? Um, it would be for LiPo cell, would be 4.2 volts. And um, I'd say since this is an unknown, we don't know this battery. This came with the, the whole package you told me. Yeah. And uh, I'd say we try to get some current in there to, okay. to be sure that it takes charge. Okay. So when I first got the battery here with the unit, it's been in the post for a few weeks. This had 11.7 volts. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't fully charged, but the green battery status indicator was on. It was playing music. Mm -hmm. I wanted to drain the battery. I actually charged one or two meters like this from it that mm -hmm. weren't fully discharged. There was still power in the battery. So I then connected one of these. So this thing, by the way, guys, as I say connected, this has a USB. This is a power bank. Okay. Okay, so when I came to charge this one, it completely drained the battery because these carb LEDs take quite a bit of power. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So that's how I got the battery down to the 9.72 mm -hmm. uh, by doing that. Yeah. So what are we going to do? We're going to charge the battery, you say? Yeah, I'd say we, we try if it takes charge. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, uh, you simply get your bench power supply. You go for the max voltage you can set. So in our case, it would be 12.6 volt for this cell. Okay. Three times 4.2. Are there some specifications on the battery? Yeah, probably. Because you don't need these, because if you know what, what, you're, what you're doing there, okay, focus. 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 I did say, guys, this isn't edited, so... 10.8, yeah. Ah, I have something. Uh, Spannung, 12.8. Oh, yeah, this is German, no? That's Akku für Docking, something, something, replacement battery. So the Spannung down there is the voltage. Okay. Uh, so 10.8. Um. This is a nominal voltage, so they're okay. probably going for 3.7 volt or something. But the max voltage would be 12.6. Okay. It's a LiPo. A LiPo is um, 4.2. Yeah, and as I said, I had 11.7 yeah, originally yeah. anyway. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if we want to get some ch charge in there, we set the the uh, the, um, the power supply to 12.5. So we don't want to step it up yeah. to the max. And then we simply go for some current in there. What okay. Is yeah, well, I say I'm actually just going to put the camera on, guys, one. while Zach was explaining that. So, yeah. if I just get down there here, this is almost like a live recording, guys. This, yeah. is, what, this is what live would yeah, kind of be unscripted. like. Unscripted. Unscripted. Oh, this is the title for the video then. Unscripted <laughs> repair. So, what, uh, what should we set this to? Give me 12.5 or something. Yeah. If it was scripted, that would be level, but it's like at a, a Batman <laughs> angle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's what works. This is fine. Do you remember the original series of Batman? We won't charge us to the, to the max. Yeah. And uh, since the voltage display on there is somewhat a guesswork anyways, maybe you want to get a little, little, little lower. A little bit lower than that. Okay, so... 12.5 or 12.4. It has a fine adjust on it. So it nice. 12.5, okay. And then we set the current for something we want to charge the battery with. Let's... So, uh, uh, let people see what we're doing then, yeah. Uh, 3,000 3, something milliampers. So three, uh, give it give it 500 mil. You want me to put the current on what? Yeah. Oh, you want me to set the current limit, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you want me to set it to? 500 mil. Half an amp? Half an amp, please. Okay, so we just short these together mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Yes, this works. Fine, fine, fine. Is that close enough? This is close enough. Okay, we're well, on. So, uh, so, an arm? So Go for it. So we connect the black to the uh, black. The orange has the black. Well, it has the black thing on it. Oh, right? it has a black thing. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, this is how I Was this going to explode or anything? Mm, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> 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 you know, Jack, you would still be with the greatest confidence. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. Perfect. It's drawing half an amp. Half an amp, and the voltage is, you see the voltage? Do the you, color you, image come on. Do the people see the, yeah, they see this. Yeah, yeah. they see this, yeah, yeah. 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 So you see the voltage down there to, when it uh, came down to 10.7. Yeah. So this is an actual, actual battery voltage we see in there. And that's because the current limit's out. See the CC, the yeah. red LED yeah. here. So it's actually gone so, to current limit. Yeah. So if you keep this running, what would happen would be the voltage would increase. We probably see this in a moment. Okay. No, this won't get hard. It's only six. No, it's cold. Yeah. Um, the, the voltage was... Yeah, oh, yeah, 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, 10, oh, oh yeah, it's gone off. And this will go up until the lim limit you set with the voltage you set there. So it will go up to 12.5. 12 12.5 12 it was, yeah, yeah. And then the voltage cutoff will cut, kick, in, kick, kick in and the current will drop. So this is the easiest way to charge a light bulb. Okay. Please, if you do this at home, don't leave this un unsupervised. 
it's still a tr it's still a possibility that this could go horrible wrong you maybe want to have a explosion containment dish for something like that uh is that like the wife's one of her saucepans or something <laughs> this is from big life <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> sorry guys <laughs> uh, so so this looks good this looks good because if the battery voltage goes up uh, we yeah. have half an amp this won't get out. The battery pack by itself, it's by the way, it's a stupid one. There's no protection circuit. All the protection right. is on the PCB. Yeah, well, why are you doing that then? Because I don't really know this. What does the white wire do? Oh, the white wire. It's probably a temperature sensor. Okay. I have the same thing on a, I have a little Walkman, a Sony thing. Okay. Oh, look at this, it's already 10.9. Oh, 10.9, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, this is going fast. Good. Um, I have a little Sony and the battery, this is old as, um, you know. And uh, the battery is going, was going flat and I ordered a new one. Exact, exactly for this model. Okay. It came with a black wire, a red wire, and a white wire. Oh, okay. Oh, look at this. That's the same here. Right. And uh, I sold it all, all the crap in there, and uh, the uh, the workman told me, oh, your battery is overheating. And I was panicking first, and I thought, okay, now it explodes. It didn't. The uh, replacement battery simply had the wrong resistor in there, the wrong thermal resistor in there. In right. Instead of 100 kilo, it had 10 kilo. So yeah. it was always telling me, oh, the battery is overheating, overheating, overheating. Right. So it was like a little thermistor, basically. Yeah, this is a thermistor. So it could it be that the thermistor is the wrong wrong size. I don't know. Well, because this, this, is, this is actually a docking battery, and it specifically says it's for the model that it came out of. Uh, and all the labels in German. I mean, this could be a fake one, I guess, off AliExpress, but it could all... I, I, the guy who sent me this is also German, although he lives in London, so I suspect he probably got this from the original company. I'd have to ask him. Trusted source. Maybe. We, don't, can, know, we don't know that. I have his phone number, but yeah. yeah we don't know uh, that, but, uh, you know, um, we can test this out. Um, this is going in right now. Sadly, we don't have the original battery. If we would have the original battery, we could measure what the thermistor would... Uh, yeah. Give us back. I look up to 11. Yeah, 11 volts, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, we'll leave, we'll leave that charging a bit. If I switch to the background screen, we can mm. see the uh, data sheet here now. So, we can mm. have a uh, chat. So, this is the data sheet. Now, I was checking this on the previous video. When the charger is connected, I have about 15.1 volts here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the output here, I have whatever the battery voltage is. Mm -hmm. And wh whether I connect the adapter or not, I still have whatever the battery voltage is here. So this never increases. If this is reading like 9.7, and I plug the charger and this is still reading 9.7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But this pin goes from like 0 to 15. No, it doesn't. This pin actually goes from whatever the battery voltage is to 15. <coughs> so somehow I see the battery voltage. Slightly less than the battery voltage, actually. I noted that. That's the shock you diode. That's probably the diode, yeah. So this point here where it says adapter, VBAT must come back to there. In fact, it must do that, otherwise it can't move from the battery. Maybe somewhere through the chip there. Well, well there's obviously a lot of other circuitry on the board. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so this is the current sense resistor, and I see mm -hmm. no voltage across this. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, this is not good. This is not good because we want to see some current there. Yeah. If we charge this, we should see something, some current going in there. Okay. So um, there's some points we can check. Yeah. So pin five enable. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. viewer asked to check that. VDD. This is the one they said we could spoof this effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, FB feedback. feedback. So yeah. this is measuring the battery voltage mm -hmm. here via two resistors um, so like you said if this if this resistor was open that would float up and the thing would think the battery was always fully charged yeah uh well, if you're wondering why there are resistors this chip is able to control different packages of batteries so you can have different voltages in there so you need a resistive divider to program this chip to have the right feed feedback voltage back there yeah but i can add on that actually so the way the feedback works on a chip like this the chip must compare the feedback with the reference. Mm -hmm. So normally, the chip built into it will have a voltage reference. Mm -hmm. it could be 1.2 volts, 2.5, it could be 5 volts. And these resistors are selected so that when you have the desired VBAT, the voltage at the junction will equal the feedback. Yeah, so, so actually, the chip doesn't actually know what the battery voltage is. Indeed. It, it, just, yeah. it just knows at this point here, mm -hmm. it equals the feedback, equals the reference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't need to know this because uh, 
it simply knows the, uh, the it compares this to the reference. And since all these measurements would be in the same, uh, <coughs> they would Sorry. scale the same way up and yeah. down. Yeah. So this is why we can do. This yeah. is why you can do. So that. if you're repairing like switch mode power supplies and stuff, and you're thinking, have I got the correct voltage on the feedback pin? Get the data sheet and find out what the reference voltage is. Mm -hmm. And the feedback should equal reference when the output is correct. That's indeed, yeah. Yeah. Can we find out what the feedback should be? Yeah, we can. Well, we Must can be somewhere. Well, we can see that there's an internal regulator. So I think somebody mentioned on the viewers that's five volts. We'll find out. There's enable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So VDD would probably be connected to enable anyways. Uh, well, it looks like enable enables the internal regulator and enables the battery charge protocol center. Oh, look at this. Uh, 2.4 volts. 2.4 volts. Oh, sorry. Four, four, right. Yeah. yeah, that might, that, that might mm -hmm. be the reference. Yeah, this is uh, the, the uh, reference voltage. Oh, yeah. So the internal regulator, which is powering external from this pin, is not necessarily the same thing as the internal reference. No, no, no. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. So you expect probably to find, yeah, there's, yeah, exactly. You, you, you hit it bang on that. Yeah. So feedback here must equal 2.4 when the output is whatever you want it to be. Yeah. And this is how you, how you program the chip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Right. I looked at this. So we start off with shutdown mode. If VCC, that's the power is less than under voltage lockout. Or VCC is like, ah, oh, yeah. So if the supply voltage from the charger is lower than under voltage lockout, or it's lower than the battery voltage. It simply says, I don't charge this. I don't charge this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If the VCC is greater than under voltage lockout and it's greater than the battery voltage by 0.1 of a volt, it says I can, char I can charge it. But then it has this other thing. What's this one? Uh, it tries, uh, Trickle 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 oh, oh, okay. So yeah. if V mode if V bat is more than sixty eight percent of V flow, does V float what, what do you, should be? I don't see what I don't see V float mentioned on here anywhere. No, but this isn't really um, the thing. Okay, uh, this that's a normal thing. Precharge mode means triple charging, so you go for one tenth of a I bat. This is probably some milliamps. You simply leave some current in there that won't kill a battery. If the battery is faulty, it won't explode with that. Okay, so if the V bat is more than six, so in other words, if the battery is more than sixty-eight percent charged, mm -hmm. it goes to this pre-charge mode. Yeah. Oh no, no, I'm reading. Well, no, that's the condition. No, then then it goes to uh, the constant current charge mode. So it went down. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. If it's so, lower than sixty-five percent. If it's lower than sixty-five percent. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into pre-charge mode. Yeah, so it tries to keep the battery, get the battery to up a to point, a certain state where yeah, it can where actually with sixty-eight percent. And you see, there's a hysteresis in there. So be bad lower six, six, sixty-five percent, and be bad higher than six point eight percent to go into normal charging mode. Okay. So uh, is that you don't the chip isn't uh, flickering on and off to between the modes. Oh yeah, yeah. So right, I'm with it now. So less than sixty-five mm percent -hmm. charge, it gives a charge comes of one tenth of. I bat is what the battery can handle as a maximum charge. Once it gets over 68%, so it's not completely flat, it goes into the full charge current. This is what we're doing with the bench supply right now, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, once we get to 98.5% of fully charged, it goes into this constant voltage charge mode. This would be when it reaches the 12.5 something volts. Yeah. And you set them with the two resistors, yeah. Okay, so we can and see- And after this, it keeps, it keeps charging, it keeps triple charging the thing. Oh yeah! Oh, this is this is nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, VDD five 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 volt LDO. Okay. Mm -hmm. Low LDO. <coughs> Sorry guys, low volt, low dropout. That's a linear regulator. Mm -hmm. But it only drives one milliamp, so this isn't really a LDO. No, but this is to keep some CPU going that does stuff yeah. to get started and. Uh, but we, if we measure the voltage on pin six, mm -hmm. it should be five volts. Hmm? Indeed. If the chip is yeah. operating. Yeah, and the, st the status indicator would be interesting. You see pin 4? Charge state indicator, yeah. yeah. This is something we need to figure out what the uh, le what the levels on this one should be. Okay. Because uh, this way we can, can determine where the chip is and which mode it is. Okay, and then we have, what else do we have in the inner one? Uh, oh, this shows the charge side. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, no, this is soldering. This is uh, soldering. This yeah, is soldering. looks like a charge. <laughs> I was... I was looking at this, dude. 
I'm sure there was an ear somewhere. Cause I haven't this before. I know, this is, yeah. On the first video, I'm sure there was a description. This is kind of like a graph that shows the various charge cycle. Operation. Right, operation. So the charge cycle begins when the voltage on HD that pen HVDDD rises above under voltage lockout. Mm -hmm. uh, if the battery voltage is less than 68%, the charge goes to the trickle charge mode, what we just saw. In this mode, it supplies one tenth of programming. Yeah, this is telling us what they, we worked out. When the battery voltage goes above 68%, it goes into constant current mode, full charging. And when it gets to 98%, it just goes into this constant voltage mode. Mm -hmm. And the charge current begins to decrease. Okay. Touch termination, the thermal protection, thermal protection. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Internal filter component monitor the sense voltage. When the voltage between current, current sense, sense resistor, yeah. falls below 5 millivolts yeah. for longer than 1.8 milliseconds, it stops charging. As, oh, so basically, when there's, yeah. When the charge current drops below it much, it stops, yeah? Mm -hmm. Charge current is latched off and it ends into standby. Okay, this is the. It is charged and we don't have any. There's not going any charge in, in, the, in the thing anymore, so we could cut the, the charge there. This shows about the battery voltage, yeah? Oh, battery look at this, yeah. Battery float, so yeah, this is these two resistors. Yeah, this is why I love data sheets. Look at this 2.4 volts there, or 2.4 uh, volts. And three ch three cells would be six hundred eighty k to one sixty k. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah, can check really that. Data sheet. Yeah, battery temperature monitoring, fault monitoring. Mm -hmm. So so. Two references: one fixed at eighty percent BDT and forty five percent BDT, respect, respectively. Mm -hmm. Temperature pin voltage rises above V temp H or below V temp L. It stops charging. Mm -hmm. Indicates a fault. So can we measure these? We probably can. Look at this, the values of R1 and R2 are set according to battery temperature range. Yeah, but well, these are internal voltages. Uh, yeah, we don't need to, need to measure that because uh, after this, there's this. Uh, if the, the battery is equipped with an NTC, blah, 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 blah. RT is a thermal resistor. Let's scroll down, please. The resistance decreases, the temperature increases. Mm -hmm. So I think the best thing is if we measure what's on this pin mm -hmm. and then see if it looks reasonable mm -hmm. indeed yeah okay and what we can do oh there's a ah look at these nice one mm -hmm. so there's r1 r2 yeah from vdd to ground yeah and uh we can measure this and temp okay so we can measure that um your supply voltage regulation internally okay. mm -hmm. is monitoring the maximum minimum oh this is your under voltage thing Mm -hmm. Minimum operational voltage, okay. We can look at that if we need to. We don't do that. Oh! Enable. Oh, enable. Enable pin, if it's low, then it shuts it down. Yeah, so um, connects us to the 5 volts, so we should see some... Some voltage we can, on... We can measure that. We can measure that. Under voltage lockout. Well, we know VN is something like 15 point whatever volts anyway, mm -hmm. when the charge is attached. And that's about it, really, for that, yeah. yeah? So from, there, from there on, you go into board layout. Exactly. So This is a good data sheet. It's not bad, is it? This yeah. is this is why I should be able to get this working. What so, is it called? Feeling technology? Okay. Feeling technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, what we've been chatting, look at the uh, things up to 11.3. So we've got yeah. some charging now. So let's stop charging that because we want it to be mm -hmm. somewhat discharged. So this should charge it, yeah? yeah. But it should show us some voltage now. Yeah, what you got coming out of that now, man? Let me, let me put the uh, camera back on for us so everybody can see. Hold on, guys. There you go, so you can see what we're doing. So let's see what we have in, in there now. Oh, 10.33. Oh, we don't. No other people see this. So the battery charges. Battery is fine, yeah. So the battery is fine. This right. is good. So that's proven that one. Now let's have a look at some of the voltages around the chip, yeah? Yep. We can let this off. Okay, so do you mind if I use my flute? No, you want, want to use yours because these, these probes, are, these probes are not, not feasible for, for the chip. Yeah, okay, so let's get this. So. If you guys are interested in any live things, this is how they would be, basically. This is like a live 
would be. Yeah, uh, a recorded live thing. Recorded live, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like an actual live stream on the channel, it would basically be like this, yeah? Yeah. So, what do we want to check first? Do you want to check the... Uh, uh, can we get the data sheet somewhere? I should have. <laughs> yeah, uh, we can get the data sheet on the, on the screen. Oh, no, hold on. Give me the... Give me the, the uh, data sheet. You just press number four on here. The overhead camera, you press on, number we, one. We, we got the, so, the, data sheet. No, I need to, to see this on the, on the, at the same time. So. Okay. <laughs> get to the recording and... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This will only take ages. <laughs> Okay, so that's just going to start his uh, <laughs> charge up. I'm going to just check a couple of things. So, FP8207. So, I'm going to have a look to see what is on the VDD. Is that the one that. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good start. That, is that the one that should be 5 volts? That should be 5 volts. Okay, let's see what's on VDD. Let's see if it's 5 volts. So. While that's doing that, I'll just change a few cameras around. So I want the... Um, feeling technology. Yeah, feeling technology. <laughs> I like it. Right, so uh, I want to go to the... Um... Actually, this is a good chip. I should remember this one now if I design something like a, with a battery control on there. Okay. So... Does it a wide input range? I've got a, I've got a spare one, so you can have a play with it. Ah, great! I actually have a spare one. Uh, so okay, so what we want to have a look at while you're doing that is pin six. In fact, look on pit. We'll look on the uh, VDD coming in, mm -hmm. VBAT coming out, and pin six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And which was enable? Enable. Uh, you see, this is why we need the uh, the notebook thing. Well, we can obviously uh, pin five is enable, mm -hmm. and pin six is VDD. So pin five should be have some voltage on it. Yeah. I checked all this on the other one, it looks okay, but anyway, let's have a look, so... Zoom in on this a bit, let's have a look. So... I want the charger. You don't need. We can do it without the charger. I think it should work without. Well, okay, but I'd rather connect the charger, because then we know it should be charging. Oh, okay, of course. So, just like, I'll, you do that, I'll get the charger. Mm -hmm. If you guys are wondering what I'm doing here... <laughs> Getting the data sheet on a notebook so we can have a third screen now. Okay. Well, now I'm trying to put. <laughs> I'm trying to put this. Oh, put it the way round. <laughs> I couldn't even get the thing from there. Right, so uh, yeah. Charger. Power. Plug this in. Let's see what the LEDs are doing now. So the green LED is flashing. Isn't this green? And now it's just gone green. Oh, yeah. Green means it's charged, right? Green means it's charge or charging. Uh, let's see what um, happens if I just what, get... what feedback tells us. Okay. Because feedback, if it's 2.4 volts, the chip is fine. Right, okay. So I connect to ground. Which There's I can a actually... test point. Uh, below the, uh, the oscillator is a test point. Below the oscillator is a test point. Oh, uh, uh, so. that's a ground. Huh? That's not ground. That's ground. That. Yeah. Oh, um, ground. Yeah. <laughs> Pin okay. nine. There should be in between those two resistors over there. Well, just check the first one. So this is the power coming in. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, this is the VBAT coming out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Two point five. No, what? this can't be. It wasn't two point five before. That goes to these current resistors. Uh, eh? This is behaving completely different to what... On the previous video, guys, this was VBAT. Okay, this always tells me 2.5. 2.5? It can't be 2.5. What's the, what's, the, what's the battery voltage? It's something to do with that ground, I think. Um, maybe, uh, maybe this is a digital ground, something different to analog ground. Uh, have a better, better ground. Let me just go to the battery voltage. So, ground. No, the battery says 2.6. How can the battery be 2.6? This would be short. Yeah. Well, that's changed again because I didn't have that put on the previous video. That's. Let me check what the battery says. 
2.5 I have on here. 2.5? How could I have 2.5? Guys, you saw the previous video. I had like whatever was on the VBAT was on here. What's, hang on, hang on. So the charger is giving me... Fifteen. Nothing warm here. What was the uh, enable pin? Enable would be pin five. One, two, three, four, five. So that goes to this resistor here. Yeah. Does. 7.6 7 volts. This is too high. Not necessarily. Uh, check, it's got, it's got please, 15 volts of wide. Check pin 6, please. Well, 6 and 7 are connecting together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. 7.9. This should give, it, give us 5 volts. Something's really wrong. Something's really, really wrong here, though. Uh, the battery doesn't show me anything. Maybe there's a protection circuit somewhere. Well, I still has 2.5 on that. Well, do you still have the, uh, the leads from the current supply? Yeah, okay. I certainly can do. You, can you jolt this with a, with a little thing? If there's a protection circuit in there, I simply want to get the protection circuit back to operational mode. So, red one's push, yeah. yeah. Please go. Okay, working. It's charging. Good. That's all, that's all. I don't, <coughs> I don't need more. It's charging. Okay. Now I want to check if the battery's still alive. Maybe there's some protection circuit in there and I didn't see this right. Not something stupid like I've lost the ground on this. No, no, there's something... 10.3. Okay, so uh, what happened, the uh, protection in the battery kicked in and it simply shut off. That's why we've seen 2.5. Uh, I don't know what we've seen 2.5. Well, 2.5 is definitely wrong. Well, if I go on here now from ground... And I go to the output of this chip which on the current sense resistor. Mm -hmm. I've got 2.5. How? How? Uh, where's the notebook? Current. That would mean something between the bat and current sense is floating somewhere. Do you think I could have lost the ground connection to the pad under this chip? What would that do? Oh man. You know what? Because there's like. I'd, oh, ex man. I'd expect you, because I soldered that thing. Oh man, I think you're right. I think you're right. So this is what you what you told me. What we were talking about before. So under mm -hmm. here, this is soldered uh, to the actual uh, chip. That's how I soldered to the pad. I put some solder in here. How do we prove if we've got a connection? Well, let me see if I can uh, get something from the data sheet here. I'm going to just resolder that. Mm. Uh, I'm just uh, a bit more sold on this. So the data sheet tells me that PP, so ground, IC ground, exposed part must connect to ground. Yeah. But obviously we can't see it. I hate this, yeah. This is why I normally you go for a um, something with pins on there. The Actually, the thing is, is available in a package that does have pins. Okay. So, oh no, it isn't. It isn't. It's the same top view and the bottom view. So this thing is only available in this package. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now. I mean, I heated the thing. Got that. That must be soldered. Mm -hmm. I can't say. Oh, it's not soldered. Can you? No. No. This, there must be some connection now. Right. Oh, I got pretty hot with it. Hot air to start off with now. Yeah. Okay, let's try again. Let's try again. So, plug this onto here. Ow! It's, it's bloody hot. Maybe it's hot. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, bit, it's a bit warm. That. This, this thing won't go the other way around. It'll go in one way, won't it? I think you can only put this in. Anyway, I've got 15 volts. Where I should have 15 volts coming in, so it must be. Oh. Stick bit came off the edge of the connector there. 
Does this just want to plug in then? Ooh. Oh, you see a slightly bent pin there at the end. Oh, crap. I see. Yeah, it. I see it. So I don't like it. This is why I like using the optical microscopes. I've got stereo vision mm -hmm. yet. So, in we go. Okay. Let's try this again. Just get you yours. It's not very long is the, the, the problem with this. Swiney thing. Bloody hell. Yeah, bloody hell. Yeah, it's proving it really. <laughs> Right, it's in. It's in and it's flat. Okay? At least the thing's cool down, I can touch it now. No, this is the maximum ratings on this chip is 6 volts per pin, so we maybe have killed the chip. No, if there's no ground to it, no comet can fly through it. That's really hope. So, we're going to ground. Uh. So this is your supply coming in, but well, it's on this capacitor anyway. Yeah. No, no, you could see no, it. Yeah. Fifteen point one five. Okay, input voltage is there. Input voltage is there. Output voltage. One point nine. What? Where? Where did you measure? Uh, pins 13 and 14. So this would go to, um... The battery, but the battery isn't connected it's at the charger, moment. Yeah. Uh, so if I connect the battery... There you go. That should be the battery voltage, yeah? So, ground. Battery voltage. 10.3, yes. Okay, so whatever was wrong is now not wrong. Okay. So we have 10.3, that's the battery voltage. Yeah, don't ask. Don't, don't ask, don't no, ask. No, uh, ask. Now, which was, enable was pin 6? Enable is 5. Enable is 5, so, so that's the one that goes to this resistor, yeah? No resistor, yeah. I, I hate that I've made stereo vision. 4 volts. 4.8. So this, yeah. so this is enabled. I bet we had no ground before, you know. Yeah, I think so. Can you go for a pin set 6 or 7? Well, 6 and 7 was connected should, should, together. Should be 5 volt. They are. So that's 5 volts. So that, that chip was, is it operating. Was ground. That, it was is that the output from the... ground. <laughs> is that the output from the LDO? Yeah, it is. Okay. So that's good. Enable is good. Yeah, check pin 9, please. In the, in, in the middle of the two resistors down there. Yeah, there. There. Should be 1.9. This is good. Because this is actually the voltage I want to see. What was the reference? Uh, 2.4. So, so you'd expect this to be lower than the reference yeah, voltage. It is. And this is exactly where I want to see this. So uh, there's some room to charge. So uh, That's changing. Do you think this thing's actually charging now? Uh, measure, please. Uh, measure across the, uh, the current Oops. resistors. Uh, yeah. I'll go to the millivolt range. Millivolt? Okay. Yeah, millivolt. So it's going to be very low voltage, this is, yeah? Across the current sense. No. no. Let me have the NN meter. It's much more sensitive. Can you see? Okay. The NN, which one is it? Uh, it's the small red one. That, uh, this end, that little red one there. Oh, yeah, I see. Get over there. This charge voltage, I mean, the resistors are 0.05 ohm, two in parallel, so that's 0.025 ohm. Oh, yeah, you're right. So this is going to be a very low voltage. Yeah. Well, it should push some, some, some current through there. Well, even if it was a, uh, an amp, if it was one amp, 3.025 of an ohm, mm. yeah? <coughs> v equals uh, I times R, yeah? yeah Which is one times 0.025. Oh, you're right, you're right. So it's low, yeah? It's 0 0.025 of a volt. Mm. Gotcha. But if I put this meter where that one is, and I go into milliamps. Uh, so on on this on this range, look, I can measure down to 0 0.1 milliamp. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If, we should. If I press if, if I press again. Right. Okay. 
Is that, yeah, point, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a range on this that goes lower. No, it's amps range. Okay. Okay. I'm on milliamps, I'm on the wrong range. I want volts, stupid me. <laughs> it's a good job we didn't connect that, yeah? This is why it's live. This is why it's live, so. Simulate. So on now, on this range here, I'm actually on uh, point zero zero one millivolts. Ah, okay. It's oh, a lowest. This is low. This is low, so what does it read across these resistors now? So from uh, here to here. It's charging. It's freaking charging. So it wasn't charging before on the previous video. This was always zero. So it looks like the problem with this is I didn't have a good connection to the ground pad under the chip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's just charging. It's, it's charging, definitely what, charging. What do the LEDs tell us on the, on the back side now? The LED's towers. Oh, it's, it's red. It says red flashing. And this is probably charging. Yeah, it's probably charging because it was always on green before. Yeah. It's charging. You fixed it, man. Yeah. You fixed it. No, in between us. And to be honest, no, really, you guys fixed it. Because at least one of you suggested. Or did you? No, one of you suggested that I might have a short from the centre pad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I read, I read that. Uh, but nobody suggested that I might not have a connection to the centre pad, no ground on the charge mm -hmm. chip. Yeah. And these are hard to... I normally avoid these. If I see it, there's a ground pad that, that must be connected. Either way, I choose uh, assembly, because I don't want to do this by hand. Exactly. Or, yep. or I try, try a different chip. These are parts are normally there for um, thermal connections, but there are chips that simply have the pad Without any connections, it doesn't matter if you connect anything to that. Yeah. So uh, if we find the buttons again, the thing with the buttons on, the new remote, because I probably told you how this was live ish. <laughs> um, oh, I saw, oh, this, I saw this as well, yeah. So if we Is can change back, if we change the microscope on pin camera two, not here. I can cut this a little bit, guys, because we're trying to find the remote for the cameras. Oh, isn't it? No, it isn't. No, that's the. Come on, it's on the. See it somewhere, the remote for the cameras, yeah. Uh, where have you gone? It's I, not this one. Oh, it's that one! It's not the one that was directly in front of me, right? <laughs> so if I go... <laughs> nice one, man! <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll, well, I'll show you guys a minute where it actually was. So this is the old chip. And this is underneath it, and this is what you can see about the pad. Yeah. In fact, it's like kind of like indented in the middle. Look at that. Yeah. That's where the hole was. So when I soldered it, rather than, I didn't want to put too much solder on this pad in case when it went flat, it shorted by bleeding outwards. And obviously, that was also my mistake. Hmm. Yeah. So I did it by putting some solder down the hole afterwards and then pretty much what I just showed you me doing, but obviously it didn't work properly the first time. So what did we learn for it? PCB design, always leave a hole in the middle if you have an Always leave a hole in the pad. middle if you have an exposed pad. Yeah, exactly. That right. makes perfect sense. It, yeah, it actually, actually it is, yeah. Because yeah. you get the thermal coupling with the um, with the solder anyways. Okay, I'll just show you guys where the remote control was that I couldn't find. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, my bad cough. Thanks, Dad. That just shows two heads are better than one. Yeah, it does. S sit it together. Does, yeah. 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 And yeah. there we come. And thank you very much to the subscriber who mentioned about me having a short from that centre pad. Because if you hadn't mentioned that, I might not have thought that I had an open circuit to the centre pad. I didn't watch the video, so I wouldn't have a clue that uh, there was a pad exposed. Maybe I saw this in the data sheet. But yeah. uh, this is a uh, this is actually a good thing that people mentioned this and that we checked this because uh, I probably wouldn't have thought of this no. too. Okay. So this was not going to get edited. Uh, not going to get edited, guys. Even that bit. We're just going to publish this, so if you want to see any live repairs, and if I can talk debt in or anything else live, making stuff, let us know and we can perhaps do a bit more. Cheers, my friends. Cheers, mate. And ciao. Ciao for now.